And the Bible says, do not be discouraged in doing good for others. Okay, that's not the specifics of what it says, but that's the general amount of what it says. Point being is, you can pray for people. You can give them words of wisdom and encouragement. You can try to be as charitable and grace and mercy to them. Um, But some people are just in a bad place. They might not receive it. They might see it as you doing something petty or evil or being in their business or soliciting advice or unsolicited advice or something of that nature. God told us don't grow weary in doing good because he knew that doing good does not bring a reward. Doing good, praying for others, doing well for them, wishing wealth to them, they don't like that. God also told us that when people are doing evil stuff to us, when they're being mean, when they're not being friendly, when they're not being kind, he said, don't give back what they give you. Instead, just be sweet, kind, and graceful with them. And he gave us the reality of the fact that that's like heaping coal on their heads. Um, it's going to upset them. That's what he was letting us know. That don't expect your goodness to be met with goodness. Don't expect that evil co-worker or that boss that, that gives you the things to do that nobody else does or that makes fun of you or that other student that bullies you or teases you or in my case old people from the past that come up and want to cause friction and dissension in your life don't expect because you're in a good place with God and you're in a good place in your heart and you reach out to share that with them that they are somehow magically like in the movies, going to all of a sudden realize what horrible people that they've been and how their actions have affected you and go, oh, wow, thank you so much. I'm so proud that er, that you would share this with me. I feel so great and wonderful and let's be friends. It's not how that's going to work. It's not how that's going to go. So God was telling us already in the word that when you're nice, he wasn't telling us to be nice to people because of the fact that it's going to get them back and they're going to feel crappy about themselves. No, he said it's going to be like heaping coal on their head because it was a warning to us to know that they're going to be upset. It's going to agitate them. It's going to bother them. It's going to cause them pain. And uh, so if you're wise and you understand what happens when someone's agitated and caused pain, they lash out. So it was prepare yourself, good person, Christian, whoever's trying to live by the word and follow Jesus, prepare yourself for the backlash of you being sweet and nice and kind and how you should be to others that don't necessarily, with their actions, seem to deserve it. Now, technically, none of us deserve grace and mercy and goodness. That part. So don't get on some high horse and think that you're doing something so magnificent by being graceful and merciful and kind to somebody that you've decided don't deserve it either because none of us deserved it. Don't look at it like a badge of honor. That's the other thing about it. And that's probably why people don't get automatically turned around when you use kind words, because the fact is, none of us deserve it. And us who have been wise enough to believe in the words that Jesus has spoken, and therefore actually be obedient and step out in faith and do what he's spoken, or just a little step ahead, like a little tiny inch centimeter ahead than those that don't. 
Because <laughs> we don't deserve the mercy and the grace and the beautiful things either. It's just, it is what it is. And that's how you got to look at it. So you give it out to other people, no matter how they act, no matter what they do, you don't think about that. Because God did for you. No matter where you're, what state you were in, no matter what place you was at in your head, in your actions, in the way you were treating other people, he did for you. And like I said, don't think about what the person's doing. You know, don't think about if they've said things about you or wish ill towards you. That's the whole point. Like, God loves us regardless. So he gives us a command to love others regardless because we love ourselves in that way. That's how you should be loving yourself. Like, I don't care what kind of attitude I get or how I mess up in the daytime or the nighttime, whatever, in the day, how I treat others, if I'm being crabby that day or if I'm funky or whatever it is, I'm still going to love myself. I'm still going to do for myself. And he said, love your neighbors as you love yourself. So that makes it a little more acceptable. Like he didn't say accept your neighbors. He didn't say, you know, like anything like that. He said, just love them like you love yourself. And I love myself no matter what mistakes I make, no matter what kind of attitude I have or what it is I do, I still love myself. So then I can love others the same way, you know, and I can also not take what they say to me or do personally because again God tells us all this stuff he breaks it all down for us in his word to help us to work through these life issues he explains to us the fact that people do evil they don't even understand it he says in his word that when fools do things they don't even get the evil that they're doing because when you're not in a state of connection with Jesus, if you're not in that state, that, that moment of grace where he, he gives you that wisdom to, to understand different facets of how to behave in this world, when you're not in that state, you're a fool. And fools don't be knowing. You know what I'm saying? And that's the other reason why when you're kind to them, they don't understand it. Because again, he tells us in the word, the fact that those that don't get spiritual things are not going to understand it. You know what I'm saying? So when you try to walk out these principles and traits that God has taught you to be in this world, those on the other side of, of Jesus are not going to be accepting of what you're doing. It's going to look crazy to them. It's going to look like, you know, you must have some sort of ill intent in there even though you smiling you must have meant something when you brought them over that card or paid for their lunch what you trying to say i can't pay for my own lunch you know what i'm saying like it's just gonna play out that way so don't take it personal people just lift that stuff up in prayer and just shake it off just keep going don't let that bog you down smoke and mirrors people all that other extra stuff that comes with walking out the steps of Jesus that tries to deter you from walking out the steps of Jesus ain't nothing but smoke and mirrors. Heard that one from my husband. Very wise man. But the fact is, it's still true. Like, it just be surface stuff to distract you, to turn you around, to get you to feel like you know, even in the smallest way, if you feel like something that God has told you to do is not true and accurate, like, oh, dang, I believe everything that the Bible says, except that thing about being nice to people that's evil to you. That was dumb. Not doing that one. You know, if you, if you have like one little thing that you don't believe that is true about what God says in his word, it is going to form cracks in the foundation of your state with him, your relationship with him. It's going to start breaking things down like, yeah, well, that wasn't right. And, you know, and this one's not right. And that one's not right. And everything God said was true. Every last bit of it that he tells us is true. We don't do it the right way. So it don't play out the same way. <laughs> But everything he tells us to do and act and be, 
it's true. So you just got to have faith and keep doing it. And don't let the nonsense deter you. Because trust me, it's going to get ugly. If you believe what God says is true and you start living your life like what God says is true, it's going to get ugly. Them smoke and mirrors is going to get real. You know, you ever seen those magicians that like do stupid stuff like pull a coin from an ear, like old grandpa trick or something. And you're like, OK, big deal because you had a coin in your hand. But then you see those other magicians that can make a whole building disappear. And you're like, dang, OK, that got serious. Like the building is actually not there. How did that work? But both things are an illusion. Both things are smoke and mirrors. But the higher of ev evolution, I guess, evolution, <laughs> the higher of, of experience, the more knowledge, the greater you get, the level you get to, the greater the illusion becomes, the more intense it is. So when things shake loose and things start coming against you as you walk out, your belief in what God says it's still smoke and mirrors because you're still protected. You're still protected, but it's going to get intense and it's going to get ugly. Things are going to shake. That's what's going to happen. That's either you believe or you don't. Trust me. It's better be on the side of the, not the fools than over there with the fools. Just saying. All right. Later.